my name's Jen. I'm a recruitment and teaching coordinator here at DELC and I'm joined today by Elliot Cousins, who is a second year French studies and Spanish studies student. So Elliot, I'm now going to ask you some questions about life as a languages student here at Lancaster. My first question for you is what made you decide to study languages? Well, they've always fascinated me, to be honest. Um, my family is full of people who can speak all sorts of wild languages. I think my granddad can speak, I think it's seven now, I want to say. So, you know, hearing him speak to his friends all over the world and I've got family who live in France. So going to visit them, I've always sort of been truly fascinated about being able to communicate with as many people as I possibly can because, you know, just sort of going to different places and experiencing the culture through someone else's language to me is something quite important and that's something that I've always wanted to pick up from young when I used to hear my granddad speak to his friends over the phone and when I used to go and visit my family in France I always used to try my hardest to speak to as many people as possible and through that I'd sort of pick up a few things here and there and then when it came time to sort of choosing options at school and at college there was really only one thing that stood out to me and that was the languages so um realistically it's just something that's always been presented to me in life and I just wanted to keep that going up until now and you know so far I've loved it and I hope I continue to love it for the rest of my life yeah that's really cool how, how come your granddad could learn seven languages um well, I think he sort of first started with French and German when he was sort of my age. And I think he did a degree in German at university. Um, and then sort of, I think he became a tour guide sort of later on in life. And sort of, he went traveling the world and got to see all these amazing places. And I think through that and you know sort of getting to know all these amazing places it sort of comes with that so like I think I think the most obscure language I've ever heard him spoke ever heard him speak is some sort of I think it was I think he's fluent in Romanian I want to say yeah. which is really interesting because you know he used to he used to run guides of um, Transylvania as a part of his tour company so visiting there all the time sort of I guess you sort of pick it up and having friends over there I guess helps as well so it was it was really quite fascinating to sort of hear him speak a language that when I was like six I didn't even know existed so yeah it's it's really great yeah that's so cool um, okay so my next question is why did you choose Lancaster um it just stood out to me from all of the other universities I visited. Um, you know, it's it's a good distance away from home that I can feel independent. Um, but as well, I sort of feel like the campus is a really good space to be. And when I went to visit the campus in, oh, I think it was 20, 2019 now, which feels forever ago, um, I just immediately fell in love with it. I thought it was so beautiful to look at and I thought the facilities that are on offer were amazing and speaking to members of the department specifically I just sort of fell in love with the course as well because you know in terms of what was offered at other places it sort of felt it felt more modern and it felt more appropriate for what I wanted to learn rather than just sort of sitting there reading the next sort of 13th century lit piece of literature next so you know I thought it would it would be the best to sort of equip me into getting into the real world. So, yeah I, I remember when I was looking at unis and a thing that really stood out about Lancaster was the way you, you can do three subjects in your first year mm. like I just think it's so good for like like for most people they don't they're not really 100 percent sure of what they want to study so it, it gives like a radical flexibility yeah yeah that was that was something else as well actually um was not only sort of being able to 
do the languages, but I also used the minor subject in my first year to pick up something that I've never studied before, but I've always wanted to. Um, and just through that, I sort of, it, it helped me broaden my horizons so much because like I had been given this opportunity to sort of study something that I'd never done before. And I found it really fascinating to do. So, you know, I'm, it's something that I'm actually very grateful for that I was able to do because had I gone somewhere else and I had just stuck with the languages, I probably wouldn't have had that opportunity to sort of do something that has always fascinated me, but I've never, I've never quite had the chance to do. What was the other course that you chose? Uh, so I chose history because it was, there was sort of more, more of an eye on pieces of history that I've never had the chance to do before. Yeah. So looking at sort of like earlier history and then there was sort of more of a focus on other aspects of history that I'd never had the chance to study before. And I think there was one week we looked at um, dictatorships in Latin America, which sort of went hand in hand with my studies as a Spanish student, because that was something that we were doing at the time. I think we were looking at Che Guevara at a similar time. So, you know, it was something that really helped me in t like come to terms with sort of both subjects. And at the same time, it was something that I'd never previously had the chance to study. So it was something that had, you know, truly fascinated me. And I was finally able to sort of scratch that itch that I had to learn about it. Yeah. So my next question is, uh, what modules are you currently studying and what are your favourite modules that you have done so far? So at the moment I'm studying, uh, so of course there's like the, the core modules. So you have uh, French 200 and 201, which is like the written and oral skills. Um, and that's the same for Spanish as well. And then there's also the context modules, um, which I find truly interesting because you know, it's sort of an opportunity to broaden my understanding of both Francophone and Spanish speaking contexts and cultures. So, um, you know, being able to explore that not only through literature, but through like photography, art, film, um, and, you know, just sort of being able to explore cultures through all mediums is something that I really enjoy because you know sort of the more traditional courses that I imagine they would make you sit down in front of a, a book from the 1300s and then just discuss it after reading it for a week and while of course I, I would be interested in that it's sort of really good to have more options and more modern options as well so um at the moment for Spanish we've been looking at the Mexican Revolution which is another part of history that has sort of always really fascinated me um, but I've never had the chance to learn it before and sort of looking at that through um, all the different media that was taken at the time so it was quite heavily documented for something of its time there's like so many sort of photographs taken of of the events and that's what we're going on to next week is the photography of it all um and being able to sort of analyze how it sort of influenced the event because you know it was so heavily documented is something that um i found truly interesting but i think at the moment of the of the modules that i am taking i think the one that I find the most interesting is DELC 216, which is um, like employability with languages. I can't remember the exact title, um, but sort of the ability to um, learn about what sort of what the different branches I can go down in terms of my future in the workplace with the languages is something that, you know, I've I've always wanted to learn about, but it's sort of quite difficult to sort of be fully aware of everything you can do. And through that as well, we also get a placement opportunity. Uh, nothing, nothing too massive. I think it's just sort of like 
meant to be a short placement throughout the throughout the term and through that I've been given the opportunity to teach classes at school in Spain which is something that I've you know I've always wanted to do I really want to go and visit different parts of Spain and to have that opportunity to go and be able to interact with people and not only help myself but have the opportunity to help other people through teaching is something that I'm really looking forward to and something that I'm really grateful that I have the opportunity to do. Is that going to be part of your international placement year or is that in addition? Uh, it's in addition so it's just sort of something small as a part of the module I think I think they're sort of meant to last around two weeks around okay. Easter time so for for the time being I sort of have to help take online classes and then at the end of term I think there's an opportunity for me to go and visit which I can't wait for because not only will it be my first time abroad since everything that's happened in the past couple of years but um like it's it's a chance to visit a part of the world that I've never been before so it'd be really nice to go and see some, somewhere that I've never been and meet new people and get to help others out as well yeah that sounds so good even just the online teaching part of it like I used to teach English to Chinese kids and I loved it it was one of my favorite jobs I've ever had so, yeah. yeah yeah I, I think that's something really, you really enjoy um and I think as well because sort of for the first few lessons I think it's going to be quite sort of basic stuff because I think it's to primary age children so it'd be quite nice to sort of be able to talk about life in England or something like that to a bunch of primary age Spanish children I think that's something that I would actually really enjoy and and being able to help their English as well through that would be a really good opportunity for me to have. That's so good is 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 that placement a compulsory part of that module or is it optional? Um I think I think it's compulsory to have a placement yeah it depends on like what you're interested in and sort of what what's available because I know a few people on the on the module they have the opportunity to go and take classes at a secondary school um and I think that's something that would also have been of interest to me sort of being able to go into a school and help them learn languages because you know I remember being in in the situation they were in when they were um 13 and 14 and um sort of getting into like the real world of language learning and I think the opportunity to help them by being able to pass on what what I learned when I was their age and also being able to take the classes as well would have been something really really interesting but of course I, I do also get to go to Spain so it's it's a little bit of like I'm not too unhappy that I get to go to Spain let's say yeah I mean I, I suppose the teaching in the UK it's something you could maybe arrange at a later date it... mm, yeah I think I think that's an opportunity that I'll always be able to have in terms yeah. of being able to um go and take a class for a day or something like that or go in and give a talk to some students so um you know I'm not I'm definitely not unhappy that I wasn't given that seeing as I do get to spend time abroad which I'm so excited for yeah what are your plans for your international placement year um so I'm looking to take up an internship in France for most of the year um I saw that's the plan so far I'm sort of trying to narrow down my options in terms of what I apply for because um, at the moment I'm sort of focusing on internships in the world of sport because that's something that has that I've always wanted to do and it's sort of like combining my two interests in terms of sport and the languages if I can try and merge them as much as possible then I sort of have something that I can really enjoy and at the moment I'm sort of emailing several football teams in France just to sort of open communications and then go from there um, 
and then I've sort of got a backup plan if if that doesn't work or if the internships aren't necessarily for the whole year um I think if that doesn't work I'll probably study in Quebec because um I've it's somewhere that I've always wanted to visit and I feel like there's enough of a cultural difference between France and Quebec because you know I've I've been to France several times I sort of understand better like the cultural norms of day-to-day life in France whereas I feel like it would be a little bit different to go and live in Canada in a completely different continent um so and I think as well because culturally Quebec is different to the rest of Canada I think it'd be quite interesting to go and see that firsthand and sort of understand the the day-to-day life of people in Quebec and at the same time uh take up modules in subjects that I've never had the chance to study before so finger so fingers crossed I do get the an internship but if not I'm certainly going to look forward to studying international relations at a university in Quebec. Yeah both of those options sound really good it's nice as well that you're covering French in your placement year but then you're also covering Spanish in the other placement that you're doing. Yeah um, that was sort of that was sort of something that at first was a bit of a worry for me was that if I spend the whole year in France will my Spanish drop or do I spend the year in two do I spend one half in Spain or one and one half in France but then I thought like working in France is what my main ambition straight out of university is I want to sort of move to France for a few years live and work there do what I can and then hopefully when the time's right I can sort of come back and get the job of my dreams but um, I think spending the year in France or in French speaking countries will is what I want to do and it will set me up perfectly for life after I graduate so um yeah but it is good that I'm able to cover that ground by taking up a placement in Spain and I think it'd be really helpful and you know if if I do end up working in Spain I do have that experience of knowing what it's like so you know it is it is certainly really really helpful that I was able to get that opportunity. Yeah what is what's your dream job for after you graduate or eventually? Um, so I think the main goal like if I could sort of decide my life path I think the main goal would to end up in broadcasting and more specifically like sports broadcasting um because you know it it is something that I love to talk about like I could talk about sports for hours if I'm given the chance so to be to be able to get paid for it to be able to talk about sports would be really really good um but I also have sort of looked looked into um translation jobs because I sort of I didn't realize how how many jobs there were in terms of translation for sort of high-end enterprises and corporations um so last year I attended an online careers fair and someone who gave us gave a talk um works is a translator for UEFA and sort of to have a job like that to be able to um work for a company like UEFA being able to use the languages in terms of translation would also be something that I'd love to do because I think it'd be really really rewarding for me so yeah it's just sort of for now I, I sort of give the answer that I'm not too sure because you know I don't I don't particularly want to decide on one or the other because I love the idea of like both of them yeah it's it's almost like if one happens great if the other happens amazing so you know it's just sort of making sure I keep my options and I walk through whatever door opens for me yeah 
if you went down the translation route, would you consider doing the MA in translation that we have here at Lancaster? Yes. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely something that I'm sort of keeping on my mind. Um, and I think when the time comes in terms of deciding what I do next, I, I think that will probably be option number one in terms of if I decide to go down the translation route. Yeah. Um, because, you know, obviously I know, I know Lancaster very well and I know the university very well. So, you know, to, to be able to have the ability to get a master's and also stay here for a few more years, I think I would take that if the opportunity arose. But, you know, as I said, it's just sort of taking whatever door opens, really. So, yeah, I think it's definitely on the list of options, but we'll just have to see when the time comes. Yeah, I decided to stay for postgrad as well at Lancaster. I think once you've done undergrad here, like other universities suddenly don't seem as appealing, do they? No, no, definitely. Um, I think, but I think a lot of my friends and my family sort of are pushing for me to do a postgrad closer to home. Yeah, it's so far away, but I think because I really enjoy being here and I really enjoy the facilities that are on offer and the fact that they are so they're, so, they're they're very modern and they're so useful as well. Like, I don't think I'd get that really in, in a lot of other places, especially a lot of the places that are close to where I'm from because they seem a lot more traditional or older. So, you know, I that is something that I would definitely keep in the back of my mind when it comes to choosing what to do in the future. Yeah. Okay, so I've got two more questions for you. Um, the first one is, what does a typical day look like for you as a student here at Lancaster? Um, so I normally get up at around half seven and, you know, I'll, I'll have my breakfast. I'll And I'll normally have to make myself a cup of tea because that's pretty much what I live off of at the moment is cups of tea. Um, and then I'll sort of pack all my things ready for the day, make sure I've got my laptop, my notebook. Um, I normally take like a piece of fruit as well to have on the bus. Um, and then sort of when I when I arrive, if I've got the time, I will normally grab another cup of tea and go to the library to do a bit of work before my first seminar or lecture. Or if I've got a 9 a.m., I'll head straight to that. Um, and then afterwards, I often head to the Confucius Institute because a lot of my friends go there. So we sort of sit around a table, do work together, have a bit of lunch. And it's good because it's an opportunity to not only socialise with my friends, but also a chance to all get some work done together because I'm quite a group learner. So I, I really, I really enjoy working in groups and like having the option to like bounce off of people in terms of like asking questions or giving feedback is something that I find really helpful and something that I do enjoy. So um, having, having that there as a facility for DELC students is something that I do really enjoy. Um, so I'll, I'll normally stay there until my next seminar or if if that, I'll stay there for a few hours until I go home at around four o'clock, five o'clock. I'll come back and I'll relax for a bit. I'll sort of, you know, sit down for a bit, have a have a drink, and then I will normally do prep for either the next day or the rest of the week, depending on what day it is. So, you know, quite often when I come back on a Tuesday, I'll do Thursday's prep because I've got Monday, Monday and Tuesday done for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday done at the weekend. But, um, you know, I, it's sort of really good because I have a really good balance between my university work and being able to sort of have time to myself and have time with other people. And I think the university offers that balance as well, which is something really good because, you know, 
there are facilities on campus that you can use to study or relax with your friends if you want to. So, you know, for me, that's something that I do really enjoy is having that balance. And I think I sort of, I finally managed to nail it because last year was a bit difficult, sort of having everything online and spending all day in my room pretty much. But um, now I think I've sort of managed to nail that balance. And I think I've, you know, truly sort of got a decent, like sort of work, work life balance in terms of nailing all my studies at one point and then having giving myself enough time to relax afterwards and enjoy being with people and having time to socialize as well so you know I do really enjoy that yes that must have been hard for you to um do mostly online learning during COVID if you like to learn like with it in a group with other people yeah it was quite difficult um because you know apart from I'd say the the oral seminars, which were basically just online group discussions, uh, there wasn't really sort of that opportunity to bounce off other people and be able to like ask questions to other people or, you know, have the opportunity to have conversations with other people about things. And, you know, it, it was a bit of a, a hindrance, but of course there wasn't really an awful lot anyone could do which was a bit of a shame yeah Um, so you know I it was it was difficult at first trying to adapt to that but I think I overcame the challenge quite well and I'm now just really grateful that I have the opportunity to work in person with other people yeah Okay, so my last question is, what advice would you give to people who are thinking about going to university? Um, I think my first advice would be go somewhere you feel comfortable. Because, you know, it's it's quite easy to choose the place that's sort of high up in the rankings. But you have to pick somewhere where you feel at home. Yeah. That was that was mostly the reason why I picked Lancaster was because it felt somewhere where I could feel at home and somewhere where I could really, really enjoy it. Um, and as well, take a look at, at what's on offer and not just in terms of what's on the course, but also in terms of what you can do outside of your studies as well. Um, so take a look at what sports clubs or societies there are um and just sort of if there's like you'll always find something for you I think but you know just sort of make sure that you can fill your time with things that fascinate you because you know being honest studying it isn't always light work and easy so I feel like having something that you can go to on a Friday night or on the weekends or like a sports club in the evenings where you can go and just sort of drop everything for a couple of hours I think is so important to making sure that you it really enjoy life at university. Yeah thanks so much for that Elliot that was really interesting to hear about your experiences as a student so far and your future plans. 